All right, how's it going, Neil? So this right here is my server rack. And one of the key components, especially for somebody with massive file servers, like what I've got here, is network throughput. And so today we're going to be answering the question, is 25 gigabit worth it? So this Unify switch that I've got right here has four 25 gigabit ports, SFP 28 ports, as well as 28 10 gigabit SFP plus ports. And the way I've got those four 25 gigabit ports set up is one of them I reserve for using with testing and I'll put it to my computer for testing and things like that. Then one of them goes into my network switch that's my network distribution where my 10 gigabit switch is that goes to all my computers in the office as well as I've got a virtual Mac mini that I stick up there. And then the other two both go into my custom built TrueNAS server that is all SSD with a massive hard drive volume for other sections. And the reason I use two of those ports is, one of them I've got dedicated to storage for virtual machines, and the other one of them I've got dedicated to the rest of the network. And this is a lot of equipment. And so today I'm going over the question, is 25 gigabit worth it for a network like this? Do I see real upgrades or would it be fine if I just had bonded 10 gigabit ports and does it matter at all and before we get started i want to answer one part of this because it always comes up when we're talking about 25 gigabit we were talking about internal network speeds we were talking about the lan speeds so essentially how fast a device on the network can ta contact another device also on the network we're not talking about internet speeds i've got one gigabit internet speeds at this office and honestly I don't even use that to its full extent. If you came here wondering if 25 gigabit internet speeds were worth it, I'll answer you this right now. No, they are not. From my testing, it's pretty rare to actually ever need or really even use more than one gigabit. Two gigabit plans can be nice if you got a few people who are downloading things at the same time, especially massive Steam games. But past that, you start getting into hardware limitations that gets really hard to even use. Most websites will not let you pull more than one gigabit of data from them if they even let you do that. So for 25 gigabit internet, probably not worth it, but would be very fun if you can get a router to actually route that fast. But first, I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, our web developer, Vasazio & Co. So if you remember back about a year ago, we went through a massive rebrand on the channel new logos, new colors, as well as a brand new consulting arm, Yarbrough Technologies. And we did this all with Matt. So he went through the entire process with us, actually recommended we spin this off. And I cannot speak highly enough of his services. He designed our logos, our website, our new colors, as well as sat down with us and developed a business plan for, hey, what do we want to market? What do we want to look for? How should we approach this? And his advice was honestly invaluable. We went through the entire pro and con of all the decisions with him and helped us figure out what we wanted to make this into. And genuinely, I cannot speak highly enough of him. If you're looking to take your business to the next level, check out Vasazio & Co in the link in the description. They offer everything from marketing to branding to web development, all the way to developing a full-blown business plan and everything in between. Their work absolutely shows for itself. So check them out down in the link in the description and thank you for sponsoring today's video. Now let's talk about internal network and let's talk about how we're set up here. So this right here, that is my aggregation switch. What that does is what the name sounds like. It aggregates everything together. All of my key data, all my virtual machines go through there, all my file servers go through there. My main router is hooked up directly into it. And then what goes off of it are all my other switches and devices. So if you look right here, and you've seen in other videos that I've got, I've got two fiber cables that I ran through the ceiling to just the back of the camera right there, which is my kind of network distribution. And the reason I ran fiber for that was the ability to hit those 25 gigabit throughputs. That's because the switch that I've got that actually kind of feeds all the computers in the office is a 10 gigabit Unify Enterprise XG. And that switch has 24 10 gigabit RJ45 ports on it and two SFP28 25 gigabit ports on there. And so what that means is that switch 
can talk to this switch, which talks to everything else in the network at 25 gigabit speeds. And in all actuality, I will hit those. So even though the majority of the time, I never have one single device hooked up with 25 gigabit because I've just not found it to be that useful. Where it is really useful is those multi-device hookups. So my NAS is easily fast enough to saturate the five gigabytes of data per second. So 50 gigabit of throughput because it's all SSD with 128 gigs of RAM. And so it has easily enough compute in SSD to actually serve pretty much whatever data I want to pull off of it. So that means my bottleneck ends up being the network throughput. All the 10 gigabit computers on the network, if they're pulling files from the NAS, if I'm copying and pasting files, they are sticking right at 1.2 gigabytes of data per second transfer rate. They are able to easily saturate the 10 gigabit connection to them. And so when we're talking about multiple people working at the same time, 25 gigabit actually doesn't come into play here. So if I'm dumping data from my CF Express type B cards that can pull at one gigabyte per second easily, I don't want to have an effect on Katie when she's editing or another computer that might be processing data. And so even though no one computer is ever using the full 25 gigabits, they're all really limited to 10, how I actually use the network day in and day out, the network absolutely can support having pretty much three computers pulling at the fastest as they can do without really having a significant effect on each other, which is awesome. And that's the reason that I've got 25 gigabit here, as well as the fact that it's pretty awesome. So I was talking about there from a file server perspective, really your SMB file server copy and pasting massive files. And that's what one of those two NICs to my server does. But that second 25 gig NIC is dedicated storage for NFS for my VLANs for my virtual machines. And that is a side where honestly, 25 gigabit isn't really worth it. For me, I've got three hosts running off of this. And I'll be completely honest with you, I never see traffic more than about five gigabit from that. That's because honestly, virtual machines don't actually pull that much throughput on a day in and day out basis. Even though I've normally got somewhere between 30 VMs running at any given time, it's not like they're all hitting and doing things at the exact same time. And most things are going to be IOP limited before they're actually going to be throughput limited. And so from a virtualization perspective, unless you've got a huge workflow or maybe you're virtualizing a file server, I've just not found 25 gigabit to be that necessary. And I would absolutely give that up to do a different setup here, but I still keep it just to make sure there are no bottlenecks and to really test it out. For me, if I shut down all three hosts and I boot them all up at the exact same time, which is when you're going to get the fastest possible reads, then I'll get up to the six or seven gigabit levels. But I just never see us going over that with our traffic because my VMs don't require that much data. They're pretty light in all honesty. So for me, the, on that side, it's not necessarily worth it or critical. So as a lot of y'all may know, another thing I could have done instead of actually setting up 25 gigabit, especially if the way I've described is true where Really, I'm just caring to make sure that individual devices all can hit their 10 gigabit speeds and not slow each other down. Well, I could also be using link aggregation or LACP. So rather than getting an entire 25 gigabit setup with everything, I could instead get a four port 10 gigabit SFP plus card for my file server. I could then dedicate two NICs to both my file server and my NFS server and get 20 gigabit of throughput with link aggregation to both of them and while it's not 25 gigabit, it'd be 10 gigabit. And if you're somebody who needs that kind of workflow, I would highly, highly, highly recommend really looking for 25 gigabit over that. Because link aggregation, when you're going from a, a client to a switch, so like a server to a switch, it is just not as efficient as it is between two switches. So from my testing, link aggregation, while it can give you that increased overall throughput. One of the problems with link aggregation is there is a significant latency added onto it and configuring it needs to be done really correctly. I don't recommend people use link aggregation unless they really need to because a lot of time 
it's way easier just to upgrade to a faster network than it is to actually go through and do link aggregation because link aggregation adds that latency. So if you're a video production house, having link aggregation, and especially if it's not perfectly configured between the switch and the actual server, can increase the latency. And so that means that while technically you could get more people editing at the same time, the few editors you may have actually probably are running slower because the switch now has to kind of figure out, okay, when's the packet coming in? Make sure the packets are in order and everything like that. So that's one of the reasons why I don't recommend link aggregation unless you really need it. From my testing, link aggregation between two switches, so in this case, the uplink from this aggregation switch to my 10 gigabit switch, I could easily have two 10 gigabit ports on there, link aggregated, and I will not have the same latency problems. But from my testing of both TrueNAS and Synology, there is a real amount of latency that you get when you set up LACP. And I'm talking about actual link aggregation, so fully active link aggregation that both the client and the switch are set up with. So if you're somebody who's finding that you are actually saturating that 10 gigabit connection, then having that 25 gigabit uplink can be really nice because that way, instead of solving it with link aggregation, which can have its own issues, you can solve it with really nice, clean, really fast connection. And so absolutely, from my testing, 25 gigabit can be worth it. But I'm somebody who has custom built a NAS with 14 SSDs in it and 128 gigs of RAM. This NAS is absolutely completely overkill for our business. And I could probably run a 50 man video production house out of this NAS because I've overbuilt it because I, I use it as a test bench for my client setups. Looking at clients who I've got specifically in the video production industries, it's pretty rare that they ever actually need 25 gigabit. Most of the time, 10 gigabit is more than enough and they just never run into the fact that multiple editors are actually pulling it. When you're video editing, most of the time you're only pulling about maybe two gigabit of throughput because playing back footage isn't actually that hard. And pulling 250 megabytes per second allows you to have a lot of video files. So in general for video production houses, unless you've got maybe more than eight simultaneous editors or you're working on some really weird footage, 25 gigabits probably just an unnecessary upgrade. And getting a NAS a setup that can actually have that kind of throughput requires at least 12 hard drives or a bunch of SSDs, depending on which route you're going. But once you get past 10 gigabit, saturating 25 gigabit gets harder and harder. So even though your NAS may support throwing in a 25 gigabit card, if you've only got eight mechanical hard drives in there, it's not really going to get you any kind of performance bump, even if you upgrade everything else to 25 gigabit, because the backend storage probably just is not gonna support it. The other side of things is just how many people you've got connected. For me, we can have up to three or four different clients hooked up and pulling from the files because I've got multiple machines and I do a lot of encoding of files to test out different workflows. And so that's where we really see it. And it's also when we're going traveling, I can dump directly onto a external SSD to be able to access our files. And when I'm doing that, I'm pulling that 1.2 gigabytes per second that saturates the 10 gig link. But because it's 25 gigabit, it doesn't have any effect on the rest of the network. So in conclusion, it depends. 25 gigabit is way harder to implement than 10 gigabit. And if you are looking to go 25 gigabit, I would highly recommend sticking with DAT cables if you can, because it also is a lot more complex. Making sure your operating system and your switch are compatible and your network card are compatible is trivial when we're talking about 10 gigabit, but 25 gigabit is not. When you're dealing with 25 gigabit, you've got to make sure settings like your FEC are consistent between your network card as well as your switch. And now Unify fully supports that, but for a while they did not. And so sometimes you'd have trouble where some network cards would work, some would not, and some switches would work and some would not. So that's one of the other downsides with 25 gigabit. Whereas SFP Plus is just plug and play. I've never had any trouble with it. SFP 28, 25 gigabit, it takes a little bit of tuning and tweaking to get right, to even get the switch and the card to even negotiate a connection. 
So that's one other thing to watch out for. But if you're in a situation where your NAS is actually being pulled at past that 10 gigabit speeds, 25 gigabit works great. Once you've got it set up in tune, and if you've got a NAS powerful enough, it can fly through stuff where you can have two people just pulling massive amounts of data without even touching each other, which is absolutely awesome. All right, well, I hope you like this video. If you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. And if you need help setting up a 25 gigabit network, let me know. There's a link for that down in the description below. All right, have a good one, bye.